uh, that that makes us to uh, think and discriminate what to use depending on the context and depending on the situation. A, a few examples I'll, I'll give you, uh, let's say changes in the accented syllable and derivative. Let's say academy. Uh, when, when we talk of a word like academy, so he runs an academy. Academy is a, uh, is a word in which it gets the accent on the second syllable, so academy. That uh, first O is a weak syllable and, and that's, uh, that not, that's not accented and so it becomes academy. But then when we turn it into adjective, so it becomes academic, uh, the accent, the word stress is shifted to demic. So it becomes academic. And uh, when, uh, again, the academic uh, converts to something like academician, so again, the stress gets shifted to academician. We don't say academician, we, don't, we say academician. So similarly, advertise. In, in, in advertise, in, in the case of academy, O was a weak syllable, and therefore we stressed on the K. So it becomes an aspirated K uh, because it's a voiceless plosive. So it becomes academy. But then in case of advertise, uh, it, it's, O is a, is a strong syllable, it's not a weak syllable, and therefore it, it takes advertise. And when we talk of form it into a, change it into a noun, it becomes advertisement. So advertisement. Similarly, uh, another is examine. Uh, in, in examine, uh, stress is on za. So examine, then examine. We are examinees. So examine. And then examination. And this is how when we change the uh, word form due to derivatives, the change in their, in their uh, the position of the stress also changes. The other, other one was noun and a noun or adjective is one block and verbs the, the other type. In case of nouns, nouns and or adjectives, the accent is always in the first syllable. So absent, he, he, when we say he is absent from the class, that's uh, adjective. Or uh, they are, they are uh, presenting a concert today. So concert is a noun. Or he is, he is known for his conduct. He is known for his conduct. So there again, conduct is, a, the accent, is accented on the first syllable. Uh, or, or convict. He is a convict in this case. Uh, but when we uh, use them in verbs, the accent or the stress gets shifted to the second syllables in uh, examples like this. Digest. I can't digest his insult. Or export. India stop exporting uh, PPEs. Or import. We import uh, diamonds. Or object. I object your honor. Or perfect. He has perfected the art of, art of uh, speaking. Or uh, uh, produce. They are uh, farmers produce rice. So that's, uh, those are verbs. Then uh, in case of compound words, words made up of two or more words. And in, in case of compound words, the first elements are accented. So examples like air raid or blackbird or bookshelf or cardboard or crossword. Similarly, in the the other types of uh, compound words could be lifeboat or raincoat or school boss or tea party. We don't say tea party, it's a tea party or school boss or raincoat. So in all these cases, the first elements are accented because they are compound words. And compound words with uh, ending in uh, ever or self, ever like whichever, however, all those or self, himself, herself, and all those, they're accented on the endings or whatever those ever and self uh, parts are there. So examples uh, could be herself, himself, myself, themselves, however, whatever, whenever, whoever. We don't say whoever, we say whoever, whenever, whatever, whatever might be the case, India is going to win. They themselves are to blame. I did it myself. He himself has done it. So in all these cases, the accent is on the endings, the self and uh, ever. One more 
set of words, we have compound words where both the elements are extended. There are compound words, as I told you, are made up of two or more words. And in such cases, I, I'm now going to list out some words, some compound words where both the elements are extended. Afternoon. So we say, now it's afternoon. So no, another hour from now. Good afternoon. He is a bad tempered boy. Uh, he is a good looking man. This is a homemade uh, sofa. He is a postgraduate in English. Uh, Professor Mahapatra is our vice chancellor. So those are in both in these words, in these compound words, both the elements are accented. Okay, everybody, uh, everybody is able to hear? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay, very good. Thank you. <clears throat> so when we uh, put accent on both the words, both the elements or both the components, uh, like just now I gave examples of, of, let's say, vice chancellor or postgraduate, both the elements are accented and they, uh, they are different from the other compound words that we discussed just a brief while ago. Uh, something like where you have accent either on the first element or on the second element. In the words like himself and themselves and all those, they are accented on the second element. In the words, uh, in other compound words, we have, uh, they are accented on the first <laughs> element. In, in some cases, we, if they are accented on... Please, please mute, mute, your, mute your mic. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, now, words with weak prefixes always get accented on the root. Uh, weak prefixes, those which have weak uh, syllables or weak prefixes. Prefixes are those which are added to root words to give us new words. Suffixes are, they are added to the beginning of a word. And suffixes are added to the ending of a word. So let's say uh, in a in a case like friendship, friendship ship is a is a suffix. But then in a in a in a, in a word like unpleasant, un is a u and un is a is a prefix. So this is how with words with weak prefixes always get accented on the root. So uh, a bore, a broad, a head, alone, a cause, a come, below, beneath. In these words we we have. We put the accent on the root words because anyway those are weak prefixes and they don't uh, take accent. And in inflectional suffixes, when the words are formed by adding or by uh, changing the form with the addition of past tense like ed, d or ed, or plural or third form, third uh, in present tense, third uh, person singular number s or es, or ing. Uh, in those cases, the inflection of suffixes do not get the accent, do not affect the accent. So whatever the root words, wherever they are accented, these words with inflection of suffixes also get the accent at the same place. Examples are something like the command. I commend your name for this. So uh, in the past tense also, let's say recommended. Uh, his name was recommended for uh, such and such post. Or relate. I can relate this to something else and they are related to me or solicit. We solicit your responses to uh, this class or solicited, again, no change. Similarly, uh, S or ES, when we uh, add S or ES, let's say disease. So disease, uh, plural would be diseases or focus, focuses. Or when we add ING, ING is something like, let's say commit, committing or happen, happening or region, reasoning. So they don't affect the accent wherever we, wherever the accent, we use the accent in the same place in the root word as also in the inflectional suffixes as words with inflectional suffixes like ed, es or ing. They remain the same. But in, in derivational suffixes like uh, age or ANCE, words ending in all these or ful or hood or ICE or ISH or SHIP like friendship or NESS like nearness. In all these words, they, they are also no, normally not affected by the uh, accent. The accent remains the same. Of course, a couple of ex exceptions are there that also I'll tell you in course of my lecture. So let's say 
uh, let's take a, a couple of examples from each category to understand how uh, accent word stress or accent uh, works. Uh, let's say carry. C carry is stressed on the first level, carry. He, he carries a huge burden. Uh, but, and when we change it into noun form, so carriage. Carriage also same thing, we don't change the accent. Or, or a bright, and we change it into verb, let us say, brighten. Uh, again, no change. Or actor, he is an actor. Amitabh Bachchan is a great actor. And actress, Hema Malini is a great actress. So uh, we don't change any, anything. Only exception is prince. In case of a prince, Prince Charles is the prince of the UK, of Great Britain. And uh, uh, there is princess. In, in case of princess, when we add ESS, it takes the accent on the second syllable. So in, the, in case of prince, it's the first, anyway, it's a single syllable word, and therefore it has to have, if at all, it takes, so prince. But then when you take, uh, when you turn it into, into the feminine gender, so it, it becomes princess. So we don't say princess, we say princess. And then author is authoress, and then beauty is beautiful, and white is whitish, or lovely is loveliness, or laugh is laughter, city is citizen, and all those. In all these cases, uh, words ending in these derivational suffixes, like age, ance, en, er, ess, food, ish, and all those, they take, uh, they remain constant. Only exception that I discussed, I told you was with, with regard to prince. So prince, but then princess. Uh, then, uh, and, and all, these, all these words, they form new words. They, we get new words by adding all these derivational suffixes. In one of my earlier lectures, I believe uh, that was the first lecture with you, uh, I had discussed word formation also. So this, this is one of the ways in which we also form new words. But root words are there, whatever root words, uh, root word is there. Let's say carry is a root word. We add A-G-E, it becomes carriage. Or priest is a root word, priest. We add hood, it becomes priesthood. Or scholar is a word, root word. We add S-H-I-P, ship to this, it becomes scholarship. So this is how new words are also formed. Uh, the next, next uh, accent, next uh, point with regard to word accent is uh, when words ending in ION, they take primary accent on the penultimate syllable, last but one, penultimate, whatever, irrespective of the number of syllables you have, last but one syllable, they accent, they are accented on the last but one syllable. Uh, these are some of the examples. Admiration, so ration, they, these words are accented on the, uh, on the ration. T-I-O-N, I-O-N is the ending, and the syllable preceding that is R-A, R -A. so that's how it's penultimate syllable, syllable. So admiration, or application, or determination, or uh, motion. In case of, let's say, a small one like motion, uh, we don't have any other, we don't have too many syllables, which is why that, that becomes the ultimate penultimate syllable, syllable, motion. So, or, or station, station. Uh, in all these cases, again, the accent, primary accent is on the penultimate syllable, the last but the one syllable, which means that the syllable that ends with I-O-N. So, ration, T-I-O-N, R-A-T-I-O-N, that's the, that's where the words are accented, admiration, application, determination, falsification, preparation, and all those. So, that's the norm. One, the, uh, another, another kind of, uh, another set of words which end in IC, ICAL, ICALLY, logically kind of thing, or IOUS, like PIOS, or IAL, or IALLY, and all these. They take the primary accent on the syllable preceding the suffix. Whatever is the suffix, just before the suffix, which means in, in cases like the following, let's say apologetic, he sounded apologetic. Now, I see, I see is, the, is the ending here, is the syllable uh, suffix here. So the syllable preceding that. So jetic, G-E-T is the uh, syllable preceding that. So which is why it takes accent on apologetic. I sounded apologetic. He is a terrific speaker, sympathetic. He listened to us, 
sympathetically or uh, we are going to use biological weapon or uh, there is a case of psychological uh, trauma or they are economically uh, these are economically not viable or ceremonious he he was given a ceremonious welcome we don't say ceremonious we say ceremonious or notorious Fulan Devi was a notorious uh, decoit. Uh, in fact, we, we call her uh, the bandit queen uh, and she eventually became an MP also. And at a later stage, of course, she was shot dead. Uh, so that's uh, notorious or commercial. The PPEs are becoming commercial uh, products now or dictatorial. He is known for his dictatorial approach or uh, memorial There are many memorials to Gandhi or categorically, he categorically denied the allegation or confidentially, confidentially, he dealt with the case confidentially. In all these cases, because these words end in the suffix, suffixes like IC, ICAL, ICALLY, IOUS, IAL, and IALLY, <laughs> IALLY would be confidentially, or IAL would be memorial, or IOUS would be notorious, or ICALLY would be psychologically, or ICAL would be biological, and IC would be terrific. In all these cases, the primary accent is on the syllable preceding the suffix, whatever the, whatever the suffix, just before that suffix. They, uh, then another, another set of words where they end in ITY. These words end in ITY and they take the accent on the anti-penultimate, third from the end. And would, ultimate would be the last one. Penultimate would be last but one, so that's second from the last. Anti-penultimate would be third from the end. So if the number of syllables is, is too many, then it will be easy for us to count. So from the end, first one would first syllable would be the last syllable would be the end one. After that, before that would be the second from second last. Before that would be third last. So that third from the end, third syllable from the end, anti penultimate. Uh, examples are ability or magnanimity. Magnanimity. So magnanimity in this case you have ity is the end. Then me would be uh, me would be one more, and then me is the syllable antipenultimate before that. So magnanimity or opacity or opportunity or rationality or generosity. He is known for Karna was known for his generosity or electricity. We uh, have to pay through our nose the electricity bill or capacity. He has. Uh, uh, he has capacity to do anything. Okay, now, so let's let's uh, wrap it up this uh, word accent part. When when we discuss with when we deal with accent, the first thing that we need to understand is that accents are word accents are or in in, a, in an individual case, an accent or a stress is the stress or the relative prominence given to a part of a word. So that's a syllable. Now, and, and that, that accent, that stress or accent determines the, the, not only the form of the word, the, whether it's a noun or, or verb and all those, it also determines many other things. So uh, in addition to, of course, determining whether it's, the, it's a noun or noun and or adjective and verb, it also gives us the rhythm. So in a, uh, there is regular beats. At, at, at there, there are beats at regular intervals. In a long word with, with many syllables, which four, five, seven syllables, you, you get accented and that gives you uh, regular beats. And that helps us, that helps us to, to form, uh, to express ourselves confidently in, in a, a connected speech. So when we make a sentence or, or when we uh, give a talk, so because those words, those, those sentences, those syllables connect, syllables join together to give us words. Words are 
connected together to give us phrases or clauses or sentences. By the way, clauses are, are less than or equal to uh, sent our sentences. That's because there are sentences which can have only, uh, there is a, uh, some sentences can have only one clause, but some may have more than one clause. Uh, a simple sentence will have one clause, uh, like I, I love ice creams. Uh, that's one simple clause. One main, uh, that's main clause, one simple clause, principal clause. But there are, there are uh, cases where you may have more than one clauses, in which case one is a uh, dependent clause and the other one is an independent clause or main clause or principal clause. In, in which case, say examples uh, like when we combine two sentences with two clauses with the help of a conjunction, for instance, he worked hard, but uh, failed. So he worked hard, but he failed. Now he worked hard is one clause and he failed is another clause. We are joining these two clauses with a, with a, with a conjunction, but uh, that, that gives us the, uh, that gives us one, uh, one sentence made up of two clauses. That's a compound sentence. So uh, these, these accents, these word accents, and uh, now I'll be in a, in a couple of minutes, I will be uh, shifting my focus to weight forms and uh, sentence stress and rhythm and all those, and subsequently intonation of quotes. So there we will see how these words, how the pronunciation of these sounds or syllables or elision and all those things, they help us uh, combine those sentences or phrases or words and then give us a, a connected speech so that it, it doesn't uh, sound incoherent. It sounds, uh, whatever we speak, whatever we uh, pronounce, that, that sounds, that flows like a, like a, a, a rip, a river kind of thing. It, it doesn't halt, it doesn't get uh, halted, and, and it gives us a free flow. Uh, right, now in order, to, in order to understand what sentence stress and rhythm is, the, that's another part that we are doing immediately after word stress, because that has relevance to word stress also, uh, weak forms play a dominant role. Weak forms, uh, there, are, there are set of words, we call them grammatical words, there are content words and there are grammatical words. Content words are all those which are, uh, sorry, grammatical words are all those which are, which have grammatical function like prepositions and auxiliaries and, and uh, auxiliaries are basically helping verbs, all those and determiners and all those because they do not have independent uh, standing. They, they cannot stand independently, they cannot function independently. They have to have somebody, they have to have some other thing to support them. Uh, so a content word on the other hand, let's say you call, uh, let's say something like a table, a table is an independent entity. It can function on its own. But then use, use a word like is or am or somebody or, or, or any other, even, even a conjunction also, they cannot function independently. A conjunction has to join two or more parts. Or uh, M, M has to go along with I, personal pronoun I, personal singular pronoun I, or, or uh, the, any, any of these things. And which is why these are called grammatical words. These are content words. We are talking of grammatical words. Now, weak forms, there, there are strong forms and weak forms. When we, when we pronounce, when we send, speak sentences in a context, uh, either small or large, uh, small or big, that's immaterial. But then one thing is clear, that, that those sentences, whatever we pronounce, they get the quality because we try to use weak forms and so that the parts of those syllables and words and all those, they are joined together, they are pronounced together, they go as one single unit thanks to the intervention of the weak form, which is why they, because they eat away some, some part of maybe, it, it, it may be a nanosecond, it doesn't matter. We are not talking of uh, minutes and hours, but then even in that also, that makes a huge difference because we are talking of beats. So we say, he, he gave me an ice cream. So it has to be regular. If you say, he, he gave me an ice cream, uh, it, it, it will not sound like English, it will maybe it may sound like French or German. So uh, the regular beat has to be there, then that the relative prominence has to be there, then flow has to be there, and of course intonation has to be there. So then only it can make, make uh, English uh, English like. Fine. Now weak forms are, uh, there are lots of words in English which have two or more qualitative and quantitative patterns. They have, there is, there are both in terms of quality and quantity. And those patterns depend on whether they're accented or not. 
if they are accented, in case they are accented, then their quality will be different. If in case they are not accented, their quality will be different. They become weak, weak forms. If they are accented, they become strong forms. Uh, now, depending on whether they're accented or not, if a word is accented, this has to be strong form. If they are not, there has to be weak form. And, and then uh, they are, uh, the weak forms exhibit reductions of length of sound. When we say uh, beat, that's, we are, that's why when we say it's a, uh, in an advertisement, if you have seen, I don't uh, remember the exact one, but then uh, somewhere I remember having seen something like, my dad has a big car. Now that car, that, that girl, that small little girl, stretches it so big that it, it, it looks as big, as big as the car. Or when we say in images, when you draw images or graphs and all those, we say, he gave me a big, so that big actually sounds big and looks big also. So that letter B also is big and then I also is big. And so that's, those are images to, to make us, to impress upon us that that's actually big. So in this case also, the reduction of the length of sound or weakening of the vowels and all those, and in, in strong cases, they are not weakened, they are not reduced. Length remains the same. So the weak forms exhibit reductions of length, that's number one, length of sound, or weakening of the vowels. Whatever vowels are in them, whatever vowel sounds those 24, no, 20, right? Those, those 20 vowels, any of those 20 vowel sounds, including, that's of course 12 plus 8, 12 is monof tongues and the eight div tongues, any of those 20, they also become weak. Those vowels become weak. And finally, there are elegance of vowels and consonants. So some, some sounds in between. So they, they reduce the, they lose their quality. Uh, some, some sounds change their shape. Some, some sounds uh, change their form. And then some, something happens like, uh, so that we get a different sound and there a part of that is reduced and which also ultimately results in the reduction of the length of the sound okay when we when we talk of these weak weak forms weak and strong forms that's with regard to word sentence stress and rhythm the there are sets of words grammatical words just before this slide, just before this discussion, I was talking about those weak forms and all those, uh, and grammatical words. These are those grammatical words, determiners or quantifiers. They, when we use them, in, uh, in the strong forms, let's say, T-H-E. T-H-E, the is a, in the strong forms, strong form, it's bec it becomes the, of course, of course, that's a small uh, rule also, small exception also, if the word or the syllable, if the sound following this is a vowel sound, then it becomes automatically the, we don't say the. So the oranges, the apples. But then when it's a consonant, if the word following that becomes a, is a consonant sound, begins with a consonant sound, we say the. So depending on that, it's strong form is the long E as in, as in B, B, E, E, B, or T. But then in weak forms, it becomes D or the, D. So even if that's a vowel sound, it doesn't become a long E, it becomes a short E and it becomes the apples or the, the sofas. Similarly, A or N, when, they, when a determiner, when a uh, word begins with a vowel sound, it takes N, otherwise it's a, it's a in a consonant sound is uh, and both of them indicate because they're indefinite articles, because they uh, give us only one number, talk of only one unit or one number, so a or n, in which case strong form would be a, e i like a, or uh, another of n would be n, a n, n, but weak forms would be a, uh. we don't say a, in weak form it becomes a, uh. he, he gave me a pen. Uh, or un, there, there's, an, uh, there's an agenda of the meeting. Or then uh, the, an, another determiner or quantifier is sum. Again, in, in uh, 
strong form, some would be some, like S U M, some, like B U T, but, like C U B, cub, some, and weak forms would be some. He, there are there are some doubts about the running of the flights, about the uh, resumption of the flights, or just S M, some. So we don't even say some. So, hmm. uh, there are some there are some uh, rumors about the about the resumption of flights, <coughs> right? Okay. And now let's let's come to uh, pronouns, both personal and other pronouns, singular, plural, everything. In in case of his, his is is strong form would be his, but weak form would be his. Is so we we say this is instead of telling speaking something like this. Uh, this is his house. We don't say we say this is his house. Is is that that his also becomes is this is his house, or or uh, him again becomes him. So uh, this was him. We don't say this was him. We say this was him who did it, or or it was done by him. Or uh, you, or uh, he. He again, long e. If it's a, if it's in strong form, but weak form would be e. His, he is going to come tomorrow. We don't say he is going to come tomorrow. We say he's going to come tomorrow. Similarly, us, us also. He 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 gave he gave us a an assignment. He, we don't say he gave us an assignment. Unless of course, unless of course, yes. There are there are again small changes, small rules that govern how or where we should use strong forms. If you want to emphasize on us and not the assignment, you say, he gave us an assignment, not anybody else. Me and my friend, we got the assignment, others didn't get. So he gave us an assignment. Or or them also, same thing. We we gave them a farewell, not, not somebody else. So that's how we, depending on the on the stress we we put, we use these weak forms or strong forms. These are uh, so determiners are done, pronouns are done. Now the there is another set of weak forms also weak form words which are prepositions or particles. Now prepositions, by the way, are those words that that uh, shows the prepositions show the relationship between two nouns with regard to where and all those. So if you say there's a, a pen on the table, you are showing the relationship between the pen and the table. On is that which connects this table and the pen. So even even if you you don't know, even if let's say somebody blind, somebody can't see, even if uh, somebody is a blind person also hears this, he or she should be able to look at the pen as long as he or she is able to look at the tray table. Doesn't have to go under the table, doesn't have to go and search in the wardrobe, doesn't have to go and then look look around for uh, the pen uh, in, in a box. Because uh, which I, I told it's on the table. So as long as you are identifying, you are able to identify the table, your job is done, it's on the table. <laughs> Similarly, uh, from. Again, from also weak, strong from would be from. But the weak would be from, from very, very weak. Or uh, two also, same thing. Two, like T W O two, very uh, in a strong form. But in a weak form, it becomes still. So uh, they are going to, they are going to inaugurate this. They are going to inaugurate because that's the vowel sound. It becomes two. T, just weak, short u. If it's a vowel, if it's a consonant, so they are going to, uh, going to punish them. The teacher is going to punish them. There it doesn't become two, it becomes ter. The teacher is going to punish them. That's that's uh, uh, then and for, of, to, and all those. Uh, that Those are prepositions. Now coming to conjunctions, and, but, and all those. Again, and also in a strong form, it becomes and, but then it becomes un, or, or just no, or just the, something like this. So uh, something like Mitali and, uh, and Radhika, Mitali and Radhika. You don't say and, Mitali and Radhika, no. Mitali and Radhika uh, are, are going to the market. So 
that's that's earned. Similarly, but also, we in a strong form we use it but, but in weak form it becomes but. Uh, just weak, weak a, uh, weak or uh, as in ago, as in about. In in a word like ago or about, we don't the first syllable, the first letter, the first sound is not a uh, about. It's about ago. So there, same same sound it takes and it becomes but. And we say they are they are busy. They are they are working on this this thing now, um, but we can still talk to them. So that's that's uh, weak, but, and then coming to auxiliaries, we we those uh, helping verbs be type, and then you have have type and do type. Then you have uh, modal auxiliaries, right? Semi modals all those about. Uh, there are twenty five of them. There are five of the B type, E, M, R, was and where. Then there are three do type. There are three have type. And then so B, do, have. And then there are, uh, there are uh, 14, 14 uh, semi uh, models, including semi models, three semi models and 11 models. So will, would, shall, should, can, could, may, might, must, ought to, O U G S T, ought to, and had to. Had to is the past tense of both must and uh, ought to. So there are eleven of them. Then three semi-models: so dare, need to, and used to. These three plus eleven uh, models, fourteen plus primary models, eleven, twenty-five. Any of these 25 words, any of these 25 auxiliaries, they also can be used, any of those also can be used in the strong form and the weak form as well. Their weak forms would be something like this. In a word like, let's say, can. I can do it. If you are speaking it with emphasis, I can do it. So it's not I may or I will or something. I'm capable of doing it. But then in a, uh, in a, in a word stress, in an accented, in a, in a, Connected speech, we say, oh, I can't do it. So that becomes can. We don't say can. It, it becomes can. Or, or have also the same thing. They have. We don't say they've. They and have. They, they combine together and then they give us something like they've. So they've a house in Sambalpur. Or, or must. Again, must also same thing. We must do it by Monday. No, it's weak form would be must. Uh, we weak a, uh, so it, it it must be done by Monday, or uh, was. There was a king long long ago. There was a king. Now there and was again. They uh, they lied. There is addition, and it becomes something like there was. So there was a king long long ago. We don't say there was a king long long ago. We say there was a king long long ago. That's a King long long. By the way, we while printing also, we're writing also, we write T H E R E apostrophe S. That of course can be both uh, in present tense is or past tense was. But in, in any case, whether it's present tense or past tense, we don't say there is a king or there was a king. We say there's there's a king, there's a king long long ago. So that's how those short uh, those words. Those uh, can, could, may, might, all those auxiliaries, 25 of them, each one of those, each one of those also can get weakened, can get weak forms. And those, these, these weak forms in, uh, give us or help us, help us uh, speak the English fluently uh, with, with rhythm. So that they, in a connected speech, when we speak, when we speak, uh, it, it, some of the, some of the sounds, some of the syllables, they get elided, they get merged with the other one, and that's how they give us a quality. They, they give us what is called a rhythm. They give us what is called rhythm. So that when we, when we listen to a piece of music, we, we look for rhythm so that we say, oh, that's a rhythmic beat. That's why in poetry, when we study poetry, any, any poetry, it can be John Keats, it can be P.B. Shelley, it can be Wordsworth. So, uh, or, or Rudyard Kipling, anything. We, we see there's a rhythm there. So we say, what is the rhyming scheme or the rhythmic pattern? So it ends with 
A A or A B or B A or A A B B. So that's the line in a sonnet, for instance, it will be 14 line. So there will be uh, octave four plus four, and that's a sestet. That's six. Four plus four plus six makes it eight, uh, 14. Or in a in a lyric poem, a small poem, it can be again. It can have a, a lyric, a rhythmic pattern, or a rhyming scheme of A A B B or A B B A or A B A B. So uh, any any of those. Of course, in in modern uh, in modern poetry, we don't have a rhyming scheme. They are free verse. They are like almost like prose. Only only thing is they are called poetry. But then they sound like prose. They read like prose. There's no rhythmic pattern. There are no rhyming scheme. There are the last sound of the of one line does not rhyme with the last sound of any of the lines in the entire poem. So, wasteland, for instance, is a, is one bright example. You can have plenty of them. So that's that's a rhythm. In in all these cases, auxiliaries and uh, the helping verbs, they also they let's uh, a couple of more maybe I can give you. Yeah, will for instance will uh, we say he'll he'll come tomorrow. We don't say he will come tomorrow. He'll come tomorrow. In fact, we write also H E or S H E or D or W E and then apostrophe and double L. So that apostrophe will take care of the uh, this W I or S H or something. So that's they'll. They'll come tomorrow. We'll come mon Monday. Uh, he'll give the lecture on Saturday. So this is ill. We say uh, he'll, they'll. Uh, I'll, we don't say I will, right? Unless, of course, you want to emphasize and then say, yes, I will do it. So uh, you are focusing on will, the future time that, yes, yes, uh, in, a, in a week's time, give me a month's time, I will do it. So that's what, that's where you say this. Now, uh, there's another important element also with regard to accent and rhythm, and they, they also have to do they also affect the way we speak and make our rhythm, make our uh, connected speech uh, quality, adds quality to the connected speech. So that one of the other thing is the syllabic structure. In, uh, in words in English, any, any language for that matter, but uh, since we are dealing with English and it would be easy for us to understand and give examples and then apply to our cases, we are talking of English. Uh, the, the, these words are formed by adding up some consonants and some vowels. In, of course, only vowels also can give us. Uh, only consonants, very rare. It has to have a combination of both vowel and consonant to give us a standard word. So syllables are made up of speech sounds. Any, any individual speech sound, those, any of those 44 speech sounds. And these are units next in hierarchy to the phonemes. Phonemes are the, are the smallest unit in language. Uh, in le letters and all those are in, uh, with regard to orthography, with regard to sound or speech, uh, phonemes are the smallest unit. So, pa is a phoneme, e is a phoneme, ka is a phoneme. Now, these, these phonemes, these are the young, uh, smallest units in language and syllables are, they are one more layer, one more uh, step or, uh, higher than the uh, phonemes in the language in the, in the speech structure. So, because phonemes are the young, are the smallest units, and then the, just after that, a couple of phonemes, some phonemes make up, uh, give us syllables. And a word, then words are made up of one or more syllables. In in poly, monosyllabic words, it are, these are just one. There are just one syllables. In cases of polysyllabic words, there are many. It uh, starting with two. It can have many, many from two to 10. And a syllable division is marked with a hyphen. When we divide a word, when we divide a, uh, divide syllables in a word, we use a hyphen. And uh, syllables are made up of vowels and consonants and the structure should be, are something like this, just V as in I or, or uh, E Y E I or O H O or just I, me kind of thing. So that's just vowel. V C vowel and consonant. That's at, for instance, I have a, I had a class at 11 or up. There's, there's up, there's a, there's a fan up or as, A-S-S-S. -S -S. So that's for B and C. Then V-C-C, -C, one vowel, two consonants. 
that's let's say it's ITS. So I eject vowel and then to and so those are two consonants or aims. Aim. A is a is a vowel and ma and ja, those two are consonants. Then oops. When something goes wrong, we say oops. So oo is a is a vowel and pa and sa, those two are consonants. Then C and V. One consonant, one vowel. So B or pi or t or go. In all these cases, these are C and V. Then C, V, C, one, one consonant, one vowel, one consonant again. After that, in that order, I'm talking of this C, V, C and all those in that structure, in that order. So in C, V, C, it a boat, for instance, or some or love, these are, or C, V, C, C, two, two consonants, one vowel, one consonant, one vowel, and then two consonants, a box, B, A, K, and S, bold, B, L, L, D, or laughed. L, A, F, and T. Similarly, C, V, C, 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 three consonants. Tens, or bands, or tempt. Similarly, C, V, C, 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 four consonants. Tempts, or texts, or try. Oh, no, these are, uh, yeah, tempts, or texts. Then, C, C, V, two consonants and one vowel. Try, or flu, or snow. In these, these words, there are two consonants and one vowel. Then two consonants, one vowel, one consonant. C, C, V, C. Slate, fry, school, shrine. Or C, 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 V. Three consonants, one vowel. Straw, uh, screw, or spray. Then three consonants, one vowel, one consonant. C, 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 V, C. Scream, or stream, screen, splash. In, in all these cases, a, these words is uh, uh, syllables are made up of these, these components. One consonant, one vowel, or one consonant more, or two consonants and vowel, three consonants and one vowel, and all those. So that's, that's the distribution of those, uh, those consonants and vowels, those syllables, uh, those uh, sounds, speech sounds, and they combine together. Uh, to give us words. So generally in English, we uh, do not have words. We have very few words. Rarely we, we use those words also, which are made up of only consonants or only vowels. There, are, uh, there we have words made up of both combined, both consonants and vowels put together, uh, depending on the number uh, in the range of zero to four, zero to four. So we from zero vowel, one vowel, two vowels, three vowels, or zero consonant to four consonants. So that's the range. Uh, though it's very rare that we have only consonant, we have words with only consonant sounds or only vowel sounds. Only vowel sounds, of course, very small, uh, single words like I and all those, that's a, those are very small uh, in number also. I, um, I, me kind of thing, or E, Y, E, I. Uh, so those are very, or O, H, O, when we express uh, disgust or shock, exclamatory uh, sentences, we use O, O, H, or A, ah. or in all these cases, those are also single syllabic, uh, monosyllabic words and only vowels, but then those are uh, very few in number. Okay, then, uh, going good? Yes, sir. Ah, so very good. Uh, now, uh, I'll, I'll uh, deal with intonation for a brief while and then we will have question and answer. That, that's fine? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, right. Then uh, intonation. When we speak English, the, the manner in which we speak, the flow of the speech, the, the way we, we rise and fall, we raise our voice and then we bring it down, that impacts uh, the this language that we speak and intonation plays a dominant role there. Intonation basically in linguistics or phonetics is the melodic pattern of an utterance. When we utter a sentence, utter a, a sound, utter a phrase maybe, or a clause, uh, it, it adds melody to that. This intonation adds melody to that. And it, it, it also has many other functions you know, in addition to add, adding melody. So like whether it also gives the 
listener or the hearer uh, to know, to understand whether you are asking a question or you are subscribing to his or her opinion or you are objecting to that or you feel offended to that or you are happy about that, you are shocked about that. And so that adds those those qualities. Look, look how, how small minor things like a word stress, word accent or a or a rhythm or an intonation can also shape the discourse. If you're telling somebody, if you're talking to somebody, even even on the phone, I'm not even talking of face to face. On the when you talk to somebody face to face, he can anyway, he or she can anyway make out that okay, you are angry or frustrated or terrible and upset and all those. They're looking at your eyes and looking at your face and looking at your body language and gesture. That's one uh, one thing I'm mm, that's one thing. But the other thing is even without noticing you, even without seeing you, not on a video phone, not on a conference call, just an audio call on a, on the phone. Even there also somebody can still make out how, what's your tone, what your tone is, what you intend to speak, how you feel like, and uh, why, why is your tone so and so. That's because when we want to express something, disgust or, or frustration or happiness and all those, we can't, we, 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 we can't block them and they automatically, they spontaneously come out of our uh, mouth, which is why it's difficult for the listener to, uh, uh, it, it's not difficult for the, for the listener to understand what we mean, right? And therefore, uh, we need to be careful uh, both on while speaking face to face or even off of that also, even while speaking on the phone also. We sometimes think that, okay, anyway, they're not able to see me and I can speak in any manner I like. No, there are, there are small uh, rules that, that will go a long way in saving us, in saving us from those distrust or, or ill will or bad, bad feeling or somebody, somebody getting uh, frustrated or terrible. We always can uh, save that and that's in our hand. Fine. So uh, intonation is a melodic pattern of an utterance. And it's primarily a matter of variation in the pitch level. So when you're rising pitch, when you rise, you raise your voice, pitch goes up or it falls down. So that pitch level also determines the variation in the pitch. It's like an uh, ECG, like a cardiograph of a heart patient, uh, goes up and down. And all those. So that's variation in the pitch. And uh, then stress rhythm. Just before this, we discussed stress rhythm. So all those things combined uh, determine the intonation. And intonation conveys differences of expressive meaning, whether you are surprised or you are angry or you are frustrated, you are happy, you are stunned, you are shocked, right? We say jaw dropping, oh, when, we, when we see something great or grand, uh, we have a jaw dropping feeling or awestruck, we are awestruck by something. So those, those uh, things uh, are determined, uh, intonation determines those feelings, whatever goes on each hour of our mind. Okay, please, please uh, mute your mics. Okay, uh, there are there are four types of intonation. So falling tone, which again has two low fall and high fall. Then there is rising tone, you go up, that's also low rise and high rise. Then there is a falling rising tone and rising falling tone. Now, uh, these, each of these four tones, that intonation, each of these four uh, intonation level or that for tones determines uh, how we speak, what we mean, and what the other person understands, right? It bridges the gulf or the gap between what we say and what he understands. As long as there is a symmetry, there is a parallel uh, relation between what I speak and what you get, then we are right. Then the message is conveyed, then communication has been effected, effectively uh, successful. If if you don't get what I mean, if you if you if you get what I don't mean, then there is a break breakdown of communication. And and uh, one of the fundamental purposes, one of the fundamental rules of any communication, any uh, effective or successful communication, is that it should convey the message right. Whatever I intend to say, it must be as clear. Now, in a in a case like let's say uh, falling. Okay, sorry, just give me a moment. Uh, give me a moment. Sir, 
Sir, you are not audible. Hello. 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 Ah, yes, sir. Yes, me? sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Yeah, sorry, yes, sir. Sorry. Yeah. Ah, sorry. Okay. There was some problem. Sorry. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, uh, in the uh, falling tone, well, let's let's deal with low low fall first. Low falling. There are. Hello. There is disturbance. Yes, Rupa Kumar, please. Mute your mics. Hello. Ha. Ah, yeah. Very good. Thank you. So, in in falling tone, low fall, we we use falling tone, a low fall falling tone in case of statements. So, let's say something like the postman was looking for you. So, it's a, it's a very flat information, like matter of fact. The postman was looking for you. It's a falling tone. The postman was looking for you. Or I I think you arrived on Sunday. Again, very uninterested kind of thing. You are not very keen. You are not very excited. So something like, I think we arrived on Sunday. Uh, so, uh, second, second set would be WH questions. All those questions uh, that start with WH words, which, what, when, and all those. So when will he come? It's again, weak insistence on when. When will he come? Or uh, unemotional kind of thing. What can I do for you? You are not rising it. It's a falling. What can I do for you? Similarly, yes, no type question. Any of those questions that uh, starts with a uh, with an auxiliary, with, so the answer would be either yes or no. Yes, no type question. Something like this: Is she coming? Again, no involvement. You are you are not very keen. You are not involved in in him or in his affair. Or do you think so? Very curt. Uh, you are not. Uh, you are showing uh, maybe impatience. So do you think so? Or question tag. Something like it's a lovely day, isn't it? Expecting agreement, you make a statement, and you expect him to agree with you. So it's a lovely day, isn't it? Or you did it, didn't you? Commands or requests by one. Very calm. You are, you are not. Uh, you are not excited. You are not uh, expecting somebody to to respond to you in a in a grand way kind of thing. Very calm. So by one. Or come and meet me at ten. Uh, it's again a flat, flat statement and an order kind of thing. Come and meet me at ten. Uh, your your boss, for instance, will ask you uh, something like this: Come and meet me at ten. It 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 won't be. Uh, he won't expect you to resist and say, uh, instead of ten, can I come at eleven o'clock or uh, can I come Monday? No. It's uh, if somebody tells you something, a boss. Uh, it's 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 a fact. It's a statement, so you don't even have a choice to. To retort and then say, "Do I have a choice? Can I come later?" Right. So that's command or request. Uh, and an exclamation could be something like, "How surprising!" Very mild. You, you are not even uh, super excited. Or "Good morning." Very routine. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Sort of thing. That's a falling tone. Low fall. And in in high fall, with a falling tone in high high fall, statement would be something like, "Oh yes, I did." The very strong agreement. Yes, I did. Or Something very disagreement, strong disagreement would be something like, uh, certainly not. Like I didn't. Did you come? No, certainly not. Or again, WH question also. Where did you go? It's it's like expressing anger. Where did you go? I was expecting you to be here. Where did you go? Or why can't you do this? Why can't you do this job? So that's again, you are surprised that he is capable of doing many more things. This small thing he is not able to do. Or yes, not a question. Can you come? It's it's a reply. You you expect him to reply, uh, and though that's that's again you are asking him uh, you know high fall. You are using this with a high fall. Can you come? Or did you meet him? Again demanding a reply. Question tag would be we don't work on Sundays, do we? Or it's not possible to do it, is it? Command should be shut the door. Angry command. The door is open. You left it open. Mosquitoes came or a dog came, so you are angry. 
and you are asking him to shut the door. So shut the door or go away. Again, angry command. Go away again with a high fall, falling tone with a high fall. It's, it's a command. Uh, you are not even expecting him to listen to you and then defend or, or plead with you. It's just a, a flat get out kind of thing. In exclamations, you say, what a pleasant surprise. You are also surprised. Or good morning, very high. Uh, you are also warm. Uh, greeting somebody with uh, with warmth. So you say, good morning. So that's high fall. A rising tone would be something like this. In a statement, it would be no, no, perhaps. So you are a grudging kind of thing, not, not comfortable. Somebody told you something, you are not comfortable. You are telling no, perhaps, or something like, it won't last long, reassuring. It's, it's low rise, it won't last long. A WH question would be, when can you go? Polite inquiry, or why did you do it? Again, threatening, why did you do it? If you are threat threatening somebody, warning him somebody, reproaching him somebody for having done something. Or uh, another question would be, is he working? Insistence on is, is he working? Or did you meet him? Uninterested, very uninterested, you are not keen on uh, meeting him. Tech question would be, he didn't do that, did he? Or it's really good, is it? Then uh, commands would be take this, gentle command, take this, or shut the door, polite request. In the previous case, shut the door was a command. In this case, it's a polite request, shut the door. Uh, it's rising, shut the door. Then exclamations would be best of luck, or good evening, cheerful greeting, very warm, welcoming. So uh, good evening, and high rise would be uh, this is associated with questions, something like you, you want to, maybe you didn't hear properly or you wanted him to repeat. So something like, let's say somebody said toast. So you say, did you say toast? Or do you want some toast? So you, you, are, you are giving him, uh, you are seeking clarification. A very high rise. Toast? Did you say it was toast? Or do you want some? So that's right. Or maybe somebody said snake. So you say, I can't believe you. Or did you see a snake? So that's that's like high rise. Another would be uh, something like somebody says John, for instance. So uh, are you there, John? Or did you say John? Or this that's you are seeking clarification, and uh, there you are using high tone. Then falling rising. That's the last but one falling rising, and then last would be rising falling. This is you fall and then rise. Well, what you do is when you use this tone, <coughs> I'm sorry, uh, falling rising is normally uh, used to indicate that something is implied. Something is implied. You know, there are many things which are implied. We don't uh, say every single syllable of something. There are certain things that we imply. Let's say when we visit somebody's home, now, luckily, now, of course, there is COVID lockdown. Nobody visits, uh, nobody. That's a different case. Ordinarily, when you visit somebody and you feel it's hot and then you want them to switch on the AC or the fan. So what do you do? You don't even tell them that, can you switch on the fan, please? Or can you switch on the AC, please? You don't say that. Uh, if it's a stranger, if it's not a, uh, if you are not very comfortable with that guy. So what you do is you maybe start uh, maybe uh, using your kerchief, using a kerchief, you start uh, uh, swiping your your forehead, or you uh, your palm. You wave your palm and then maybe get some air. So that's an indication that the other guy you want him to switch on the fan or the AC. So that's uh, that's uh, imperative, right? You imply that you don't tell that. Uh, and when you imply something which you don't express in utterance. And in those cases, you use falling, rising. So you fall and then rise. Do you play tennis? Do you play tennis? And then the other person will say, sometimes. Now this sometimes is falling, rising. So uh, he, he doesn't enthusiastically say, oh, yes. He doesn't refute and then say, never. He says, sometimes, well, I play kind of thing. So that's falling, rising. Or if you ask somebody, if you say somebody, I saw you at the cinema yesterday. You said you were in a class. So I saw you at the cinema. So they are again falling rising. I saw you at the cinema. Or John's here already. So do hurry up. Hurry up. 
So they are hurry up, falling and rising. And then last uh, one is the rising and falling. When you use rising falling tone, it's a combination of both rise and fall. Like that was the combination of fall and rise. This is the reverse one. This is rise and fall. First you rise and then you fall. And uh, the rise reinforces the meaning conveyed by the following fall. And in addition, the initial rise also may indicate warmth, anger, and sarcasm. So if you say something like, uh, let's say, do you agree? So the other guy says, oh, yes. So yes, he, he rises and then falls. Or how interesting, how interesting, sarcastic. You are, you don't mean that actually. You are sarcastic. You sound sarcastic. Or, uh, but, but is a son in the picture? You know, suspicious interest, you say, is a son in the picture? Is a son in the picture? Rising, falling. Or, are you sure this will go? Are you sure this will go? So again, rise and then fall. This rising and falling, uh, in, in all these four examples that we, that I, just now uh, gave you, you are doing, you are doing two things. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, somebody, something said optical fiber joint. Okay. Uh, so this tone is a combination of the rise and fall. And then uh, you want to show, you want to uh, exhibit warmth, anger, sarcasm, any of those things. It can be warmth or it can be sarcasm, it can be anger also, when you are angry also, or even a sarcastic, like how interesting. So how you go up with how, and then fall down with interesting. Or, or uh, is a son in the picture? Uh, is a son in the picture? Is a son, you go up, then in the picture you fall down. And that, that gives you uh, the feeling that you are sarcastic about somebody or something, or you don't agree with somebody, you are mocking at somebody, you have you are suspicious about somebody's uh, movement or somebody's use and uh, all those things. Uh, fine. Okay. Uh, yes. Now, yeah. Now, now, I I think I have I have wound up the entire thing. If you, maybe in a couple of minutes I can give a, a summary of I can summarize the entire thing that I uh, did just now. Uh, just to. Uh, Keep things in perspective where we were and what we did uh, in the last one hour and a, and a quarter or so. Uh, I'll wrap it up in around five minutes and then we can have another 10 minutes, another, yeah, another 10 minutes for Q&A. Uh, we did accent, basically we did accent in the, to begin with this lecture today. Uh, and, and accent is a stress or emphasis on a particular part, a particular syllable, part of something, usually a word. And when we uh, put the relative emphasis, the relative emphasis it, it is uh, slightly more prominent than the others. So this, this, uh, this accent, this word accent or word stress is used uh, in phonetics to, to make, make it sound different from the other syllables in a, in a polysyllabic words. Uh, in a monosyllabic words, of course, it doesn't matter. In a polysyllabic words, having two or more syllables, it <coughs> gives us the it adds quality to the syllable that we stress on uh, in relation to the neighboring syllables, either the uh, one that follows or the one that uh, precedes it. And then in this connection, we also discuss uh, the changes in accented syllables in derivatives. Example, I gave you uh, one was, let us say, uh, photograph, photographer and photographic. All right, similarly, nouns and adjectives, nouns or adjectives, and verbs, so nouns and adjectives take the accent on the first syllable and verbs on the second syllable. Examples I gave was, let's say, uh, convict, that's a noun. And a uh, verb would be something like permit, he was permitted to go. Or in compound words, where the first elements are accented, we give the example of, let's say, a bookshelf or a raincoat. Or compound words where with ever, self, and all those, which ever and himself, or they are accented on the endings. So examples would be my, myself and whoever, whoever comes here will uh, win. Similarly, compound words where both the elements are accented. There are some compound words where both the elements are accented. Afternoon or homemade. Similarly, words with weak prefixes always get accented on the roots. So a bar, because, beneath, 
and inflectional suffixes like words ending in ed, es, ing, and all those, they do not affect uh, the word accent. And so examples would be something like recommend or recommended. So same thing, recommend also and recommended also, both, both are accented on the same place, uh, same, or uh, region and reasoning. Similarly, in uh, derivational suffixes, words with derivational suffixes like age, ance, e, f u l, h o o d hood, and all those, we have something like carriage. So carry, carriage, or cover, cowardice, or author, authorship, or city, citizen. Similarly, words ending in i o n take the primary accent on the penultimate last but one syllable, so admiration or station. Then words ending in i c, i c a l and all those, they take the accent on the syllable preceding the suffix. So apologetic, he sounded apologetic or biological or dictatorial or memorial or words ending in ity, take the accent on the antipenultimate last, third from the left, third from the last syllable. So ability, magnanimity. We don't say magnanimity, we say magnanimity. And then, uh, then after that, we discussed with uh, uh, the accent that is in weak syllables and weak weak uh, syllables, so strong and weak forms. So like uh, all the auxiliaries and and uh, prepositions and all those. So there are two forms available, strong and weak. But then, in case of uh, in order to achieve uh, rhythm in connected speech, we use weak syllables so that they they help us uh, gain those uh, some some movements and and therefore they take the uniform regular beats we get time to to pronounce those things with regular beats with uh, at, at regular intervals of time and uh, after after that we we discussed intonation intonation in uh, is a melodic pattern of an utterance and it's primarily a variation in the pitch level of voice there are four types of intonation uh, falling, rising, falling, rising, and rising, falling. Uh, in the sorry, in the falling, falling tone, we have two again: low fall and high fall. In the low fall, we have statements and wh questions and all those. In the high fall, also we have a strong agreement when we uh, are when we command somebody angrily, when we greet somebody uh, heartily, and all those we use high fall tone. And rising tone would be when we are we express grudge or maybe reassuring or it's a gentle command or it's a cheerful greeting we use those rising tone with a low rise and high rise would be something like this so when somebody tells something it, let's say somebody says snake so you want to uh, reaffirm telling uh, either you are you don't believe him so snake i don't believe you so that's a high rise or did you say snake? That's again high rise. Or falling rising would be something like you fall and the rise. So in let's say in response to a question like, do you play tennis? You say sometimes. So you fall and the rise. And the rising falling would be when, when somebody uh, asks you a question, do you ag agree? Do you agree with somebody or something? You say, oh yes. So you rise and fall. So there you, uh, you, you are not, you don't intend to bluntly say yes or no or something. So it's, it's something like, well, uh, well, yes, kind of thing, right? So that's it. That's all for today. If you have any questions, you can uh, leave on the chat box or you can ask and I'll try to respond. Yes. Yes, sir. Sir, I would request Mrityanjay Biswal to kindly unmute his mic and ask the question directly to the resource person. Okay. Mrityanjay Biswal, is he here? Rutanjay Biswal, is he present over here? Maybe no. Okay, then uh, may I please request Om Bahadur to kindly ask the question directly to the resource person. Om Bahadur. Okay, I'm reading his question. He is asking that what is Indian English stress and okay. what is globally comprehensive accent? Excellent. Okay, good. Uh, the other day I 
was discussing if if i don't know whether you were there uh, the i was discussing indian english also there are varieties of english with regard to accent uh, but the the standard or the benchmark that we set for ourselves is the british english or british accent and uh, when we talk come to indian indian english we don't have an indian uh, indian we don't this this accent with regard to indian accent has to be indian english has to be different from is bound to differ from bound to be different from the british accent uh, so whatever we we use in whichever context the, that's that's the accent that we use and that's indian english that's accent in indian english and a comprehensibility with as, as far as the question of comprehensibility is concerned we we need to be uh, need to take into account the manner in which we pronounce so that the other person uh, the audience or the hearer or listener gets it right uh, like the examples that i gave you uh, with with uh, regard to the intonation component uh, towards the end of this lecture all those rising falling falling rising all those you want to say something if you if you use a rising tone where a falling tone is necessary that might disturb the meaning that the other person might get offended so keeping in mind uh, the uh, your your purpose or your intent of making a statement or asking a question or seeking a piece of information you should use it uh, judiciously it's a it's a discretion that the speaker has to have and luckily for us all of you most of you are doing ma english and therefore you have a fair idea of how accent and, and rhythm and intonation and all those are to be used and therefore uh, please make it a point to use it discreetly uh, use the discretion to use them judiciously so that you your uh, intention is is your your meaning is not lost whatever you intended to say doesn't doesn't get diluted right thank you sir sir uh, i would request bibhuti barik to kindly ask his question bibhuti barik sir please kindly differentiate between what syllable and what stress i cannot able to differentiate between them. uh what level and what okay uh it's it's uh, maybe maybe your your question is if i get you right this is what you intend to ask uh stress level right stress and and uh, this word accent acha uh what stress and syllable acha syllable syllable is a, is a component of a word uh like as i told you syllables are the sound syntax speech sounds are the smallest unit of a of a, of the language uh, of of a language and syllables are made up of those independent sounds so syllable syllable is is in the hierarchy of of a language syllable is possibly the smallest unit and and coming to your stress stress or the, the accent is the relative prominence you give to a word or a syllable to make it distinct from to make it clear from uh, the neighboring syllables in that word uh, or or in a series in a in a, a string of sent words or sentences so what happens is when you when you put stress on one syllable uh, or a part of this uh, sent or part of the word that gets uh, more stress than the other words and that that makes the that gives the uh, speaker or the hearer an impression that this is a stressed syllable because on accented on stressed syllables don't get accented they they remain on accented uh, on stressed weak syllables and all those so only strong syllables are accented and that also depending on the place you put the accent on uh, they determine the function or your intention right okay thank you sir okay good good yes sir mrityanjay biswal is he here mrityanjay biswal kindly ask your question please unmute your mic and do ask your question okay he is enabled sir uh oh uh, yeah i am not getting more questions sir they are asking uh, the questions regarding the session whether they will be able to get it right okay regarding the session whether they will be able to get it wrong get it or not recorded recorded audio 
Okay. This is regarding the technical team okay. there. Okay. 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 Yeah. Participants, please do ask question or type your questions as we will be winding up the session. Please do interact. Yes, sir. Mrityanjay Biswal has written a question. Uh -huh. Why is the structure of reflective pronoun not the same? For example, my plus self gives myself, but in himself, him is an objective. Plus self. That's why I was saying that Mrityanjay must himself ask the question so that it will be much more clear. Mrityanjay, won't you be able to unmute your mic and ask the question di directly? Please ask the question yourself. It will be much more clear and interactive with the resource person. Mrityanjay Biswal. Maybe there's so, a question. <laughs> okay, is he here now? Okay. Yes, sir, I'm reading it once again. Why okay, is huh? the structure of reflexive pronoun not the same? For example, ah. my plus self is equals to myself, hmm. where my is possessive, but in himself, him is objective. So he's trying to find out the structure of the reflexive pronoun. Why isn't not the same? Am I clear, sir? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As, as far as, okay, uh, wait, where is my, ah, okay. Uh, my, myself and himself are talking. So when we use these pronouns, we use them either as reflexive pronoun, right? So, or, or uh, the other one, what reflexive is that something I did it myself kind of thing. So I did the job myself or he, he himself has to, has to blame. Uh, but the emphatic pronoun, when you use it as emphatic, there also we use self myself himself and all those but only thing only difference is in one case you are telling he himself did it so that's emphatic but then he hurt himself in the leg it's reflexive uh, as far as the accent the stress is concerned in both the cases they take the same uh, accent same stress himself and uh, whatever the rules we have they stress on the self uh, we don't uh, put the stress on him or uh, my right so he did it himself he did it uh, or he hurt his leg himself. In both the cases, we put the stress on self. Only difference is, as far as the function is concerned, this was form or structure. As far as the function is concerned, in, in himself, I, I did it, uh, he did it himself, you are emphasizing, but he hurt his leg himself, you are using it as a reflexive pronoun. That's it, uh, right, Mutunja, I got it right. I, uh, you, are, you are happy with this? Now he has written that why we don't write his plus self, she plus self like that. Why oh, don't we? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. That's uh, that's because my my is what from I is the noun. I is the personal pronoun. So the form of I is me, right? But then because it belongs to me, we write my. So myself. We don't say me self because me is objective. So it, he gave me a pen. We don't say he gave my a pen. This is my house. And similarly, in this case, in those cases, you say, in case of him, we don't say this is he house. This is his house. Or this house belongs to him. So that's, 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 the, that's it. We say him, himself, herself, myself, and, and themselves, and all those. He seems to be satisfactory with your answer. Okay, thank you. Any any other question? No, sir. No, no, no one has written any more questions right now. Oh, okay, fine then. Participants, if you're having any questions, please do write down on the chat box. Okay, Om Bahadur, do you want to speak? 
then please unmute your mic and directly speak to the resource person om bahadur yes ma'am thank you ma'am uh sir i have a question regarding stress uh yeah sir uh, yes 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 please uh. yes sir sir my question is what is primary stress and uh, i think uh, as far as my knowledge concern i'm not sure but uh, uh, there are primary secondary and tertiary st uh, stress as are there so mm. can you give uh, any kind of examples to those things uh, to clarify my doubts sir primary st stress is when we when a word gets the primary stress on a word like say, like let's say in a word like in a word like let's say uh, agreement right agreement so agree agree gets the primary accent month gets the secondary accent or in a word like uh, in a word like let's say psychology so psychology psychology co gets the primary accent sai the the first part of the syllable first part of the word gets the secondary uh, accent uh, and then then what else then let's say uh, politician okay in the, in, in the in politician so tician gets the uh, the t politician so t t tician got the gets the primary accent for poly for gets the secondary accent that's it primary accents accents are those which we use <coughs> to show the uh, dominance of stress in relation to their neighboring uh, sounds neighboring syllables and and another rule is if if those sounds happen to happen to be voiceless consonants uh, they get uh, aspirated so if it's a p or a k or a uh, something like the, uh, so in these cases they get aspirated so we say instead of say uh, politics we say politics so that the p p gets aspirated it's it almost sounds like like p like phone like uh, like fanta like father not not as much somewhere in between p and and f so we say politics or we say carrot we don't say carrot the carrot so that k gets aspirated and that that becomes uh, uh, that's the because that's a voiceless sound was less consonant k so that becomes carrot thank you sir thank you sir okay binoda bihari panda kindly ask your question binoda bihari panda kindly unmute your mic and ask your question binoda bihari panda please ask your question directly uh, could you yes. please sir uh, uh, give uh, any difference between stress and accent are the same or are there any difference acha okay. difference between word stress accent and hello sir uh, both mean the yeah yeah i got yeah, yeah yeah is there any difference uh, between stress uh, and accent both both are same as far as words are concerned only when we have can we consider it can you consider sir, sir can we consider uh, accent as the synonym of uh, stress uh yes to a large extent yes only when we use them in a sentence we call it uh, word word accent or rhythm otherwise uh, both stress and accent uh, mean almost the same thing uh so we say word stress or word accent both both mean the same thing okay sir uh, sir uh, how can we pronounce uh, uh shut the door uh, can we use the falling rising tone or the simply falling tone shut the door if you if are if it is a statement uh if it's a statement if, if it's you a are, command uh if if you are if you are giving somebody a command to to shut the door it's it's a falling tone it will the falling tone yeah okay okay sir uh, uh sir uh, uh, if we uh, can uh, can we make uh, the uh it it a point that when there will be the verb we can shift the stress from the first position to the second position always uh, in most cases yes in most cases verbs uh, take the accent on the second syllable uh, as, as compared to their noun counterparts nouns and adjectives invariably always invariably always take the 
accent on the first syllable and verbs in the second so let's say produce so the, the farmers sell their produce in the market in the market yard so their produce is noun but then we india produces uh, coal so their produces that becomes verb similarly anything subject so uh, english english uh, mathematics is a difficult subject that's a noun but then he was subjected yeah. to uh, torture their subject is a verb teacher so sir can we generalize the principle uh, yeah to a large extent yes yes very few exceptions are there very few that uh, but, but then uh, to a large extent yes we can generalize okay thank you sir i have enjoyed your class today's class thank it's you. an excellent class thank you thank you thank you haba yes sir no more questions anyone has written yeah i would like to give a vote of thanks to dr arun behra sir for his knowledgeable insight and the session that he took it was really very informative and he tried to cover almost whole of the syllabus regarding the linguistics considering into account the accent and the stress pattern and all that uh, and the very sort of example that he gave it was quite uh, interactive session and hopefully participants too like the session and we look forward to have you in more sessions thank you okay thank you thank you sir sir one more uh, by ending the session you can say that to say the learners or the participants recommend a book to enlarge our knowledge for participants are asking recommend some book so that they can learn more acha uh, not enlarge enhance so <laughs> okay uh, one one book uh, that you can always uh, read for ma ma level uh, is a textbook of english phonetics for indian students by t balasubramaniam a textbook of english phonetics for indian students by t balasubramaniam that's uh, published by macmillan macmillan publisher and the other other one for basic uh, level to to get an to get a uh, an idea of what uh, sound uh, what what english is spoken english is like or phonetics is like you can uh, follow my book also speaking english fluently uh, by sanbon publishers okay thank you sir thank you thank you sir that was nice nice session thank you haba can uh, can i get the yes. audio tape of this uh, audio or video whatever definitely we will ask our technical team they will be arranging it we will okay. tell them thank you the previous one once also i haven't got okay okay thank you please please put a word to them and then make sure that i get one okay